going to get started. We're going to get started this morning and talk a little bit about where you are versus where you want to be. Is it time for a breakthrough? And um, we're going to talk a little bit about how for a lot of us, uh, what we do every day in our work and in our um, personal lives through like the vocations that we have or through the contributions we want to make in the community. Um, if you take a moment and think about what you're doing currently, if you take a moment and think about what um, type of work you've always been attracted to and think about who you are and what you bring to any organization or when you think about your skills and what comes natural to you, uh, just, just get a little list going in your head, you know? So for instance, if you are a lot of um, people watching here in real estate. So if you're in real estate, what brought you to this profession, right? What are the things that come natural to you that really make it a good fit? So some of you might say, well, you know, I'm really, I love people. Um, I like, you know, to have some freedom in what I do. I like the idea of creating opportunities. I like creating um, solutions for people, right? So think about what you're currently doing and think about what it is that makes it a good fit for you, right? And those are some things that come natural. And I think that that uh, develops more of our entrepreneurial style. And for uh, a long time, this can really serve us until it doesn't. And so we, I want to talk to you this morning about the difference between doing what comes naturally and doing things with more purpose. And there's um, an opportunity for us this morning to take some, some inventory of our skill sets and our tools and examine if there um, are some additional tools we need to add to that toolbox, sharpen some of the tools that we have. And um, in, in looking forward for uh, opportunity, we have to acknowledge that change does bring growth and change is not always easy. Right? How many of you can agree that sometimes change is not easy? Uh, and I know that. And, and it's interesting because I'm, I'm dialed up or programmed. I like change and I seek change, right? For me, change is a catalyst for growth, opportunity, new possibilities. And yet when I really, really look at some things in my life, I can acknowledge that it depends on what I want to implement change around because then there are other things that I do acknowledge I would like to change and it's not as easy, right? So uh, as always, as I talked to you this morning, it's working on me too. So uh, what are the areas of your life, your career, um, your health, your wellness, your finances, your relationships that you seek to make some change, whether it's easy or not, it's just that you know you need to make some change, right? So once again, good morning to everybody on Facebook. If you're tracking with me, let me know. Uh, I'd love to, to hear from you. And um, what I'd like to do right now is share my screen. So let's see. Yes. Okay, can you see the slide that I'm showing here? Awesome. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So this diagram is going to help me convey the message to you this morning around moving from doing what comes naturally to gaining the perspective that you need uh, and to become more purposeful in your pursuit of achieving or of achievement, right? And so I think that when you sit down to talk to high achievers, all high achievers are gonna acknowledge that there comes a time when doing what comes natural is just not enough to sustain the results that you really want. And so when we think about high achievement and accomplishing bigger goals, it's really about becoming more purposeful. But let's start at the bottom of the slide, the bottom uh, left corner, and let's talk a little bit more about doing what comes naturally. So doing what comes naturally or this entrepreneurial style, kind of like a freelance style, right? is really where we rely on more of our natural skills and, and abilities, like our energy, our drive, right? The ability to see possibilities. Um, you know, we're excited and we have a lot of enthusiasm 
uh, a lot of us, you know, we, we tend to think more positively. We think of, you know, the outcomes that we want to have. Uh, and we get into uh, or we align ourselves with work and projects that really play to those natural skills, right? Does this make sense to you? So then we are able to kind of do that without a lot of effort. Uh, and we probably use a, a, a lot of our personality and natural behavior styles. And so we, we just kind of get into the lane of doing what comes naturally to us. And so for a while, if you can see my cursor, uh, this does a lot to really help us grow. And we see our results are, are growing and moving you know, us up in this ladder of achievement until it just is not enough to keep sustaining us. And we hit what we call this ceiling of achievement. And we kind of bump our head on the ceiling of achievement and we realize we're plateauing. And for a lot of us, when that happens, we get frustrated, right? Because we are naturally coming into things with a lot of energy and enthusiasm because we're not only interested in whatever it is that we're doing professionally or personally, but we feel like we really have a skill set for it, right? Because it, it's, it's doing what comes natural and we're achieving success until we hit the ceiling of achievement. And when that happens, it's frustrating. It's frustrating and it can be you know, disappointing. And so then what naturally happens is we start to trend downward, right? So this disappointment sets in, this frustration sets in, and we're not achieving at the high level, right? And we lose some of that energy and drive and excitement and enthusiasm that brought us into it in the first place because we don't like to feel this way. And so if that goes on for too long, then we move into what's called resignation, right? And we start to accept the defeat, even on a subconscious level, and start possibly doing some negative self-talk around, you know, this is just not for me. Maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was, or I don't have all those natural talents and abilities. And again, if that goes on for too long, uh, you know, then we start to shift gears. We get really low about it and we say, okay, then maybe I just need to throw in the towel and quit because this is really not for me. And you start searching for what you think are greener pastures. So is anyone uh, brave enough to say that they, they know this has happened to them in their life at some level? Okay, I know I can, right? So here's the thing though, for a lot of us, uh, because we aligned ourselves with something that we thought was such a great fit, right? We can do what comes naturally. You know that energy and that drive and enthusiasm that got you there in the first place? Well, it does kick in for a lot of us at some point. And when it does, we try to pick ourselves up from the bootstraps and we start to move our way back up again. And so we try to really tap into all those natural abilities with that we, we use when we got here. And, and so it brings us back up to a higher level of production for a little while until we run out of steam again and we hit our head on that ceiling of achievement uh, because doing what comes naturally is not enough and so the cycle just plays on and on and on until we make a decision or, have, or, or a choice around the breakthrough. And what do you need in order to have that breakthrough? Well, we have to look at doing things differently. And, we and this is moving from E to P. So it's moving from doing what comes naturally or entrepreneurially to doing what comes unnaturally which is a much more purposeful style. And with, with that, it's about first making the decision that you're bringing in change, right? And so if, if we have this yo-yo going on in our lives, we keep hitting that, that head and, and we feel it. I, I think if we really take a minute to reflect or if you're working with a coach, uh, if I was your coach, I would ask you some questions. We would be able to identify where you are in this, right? So you could you could tell when you're on that downward spiral of disappointment towards resignation, or if you're just like hitting your head here, right? So we'll know. And so that opportunity, that awareness around knowing means that you have a choice now to bring in some change. And so with change, I think um, we have to acknowledge that to achieve success on a high level, we need to bring in tools, 
resources, possibly most of the time new awareness around um, education or skill building, right? And so that's what creates this explosive breakthrough where you start to see the upward movement again towards higher levels of achievement. And so in a purposeful style, you are really focused uh, and clear about the goals that you have, but you're, you're, you're more focused on the strategy to get there, right? So it's really about becoming really purposeful around strategic options. And that is really breaking it down, not just you know monthly, let's say, or even weekly, but daily. You know, what does my schedule look like? It's being very time blocked and knowing what the activities are that are, gonna, that are gonna get you the results that you need. It's being open to different options, right? And that could come in, in, in many different shapes and forms. It could be uh, being open to different options around process and procedure, around systems, around models, which is, which is a big part of becoming more purposeful. Um, because without the systems and the models, um, you know, can you achieve that level of success? Uh, and can you do it as quickly as you might like? See, a system and following a model gives you some predictable outcomes, right? So it's like, it's like baking a cake. If you really love grandma's uh, chocolate mayonnaise cake and you follow the recipe exactly, you get the same product, right? Uh, I know you might argue and say grandma's is better, but basically if you follow the recipe, you're gonna get the same product, right? It's when you try to be so creative without following that model or that recipe and you change it up a little bit and just, you know, even too much or too little of one ingredient or leaving it out, it creates something very different. And so in business, we have to look at that the same way. In, in pursuing our career goals, we have to look at it the same way. And, and other goals too. Um, around health, wellness, finance, relationships. What are the models and systems that have proven to work uh, that you, you plugged into them and follow the blueprint? You would also have outcomes that would bring you to higher levels of success. Another really important element of doing what comes natural, oh, excuse me, un, of doing what comes unnatural or more purposeful is accountability, okay? And so let's talk about accountability for a minute. Accountability is really a relationship. It's a relationship with your goals and it should be a relationship with another person. So I know a lot of us, especially those of us who, who consider ourselves high achievers, want to believe that we do, that we can hold ourselves accountable on our own. And I get that. And I thought that for many, many, many years. Uh, here's the thing, guys, we really can't because our emotions control our thinking and our thinking control our, controls our emotions. And so when you are trying to navigate your own progress towards a goal and your own success, we know that there are gonna be these highs and lows, right? So on a day when you're feeling great, maybe holding yourself accountable at a high level seems easier. But on a day where you're feeling frustrated or you're feeling disenchanted or you're feeling disconnected to the goal, or you're feeling like it's going to take a long time to get to the goal or whatever the case might be, it's, it, it can become more difficult to really hold yourself accountable. And, and we all have blind spots too. We all have blind spots when it comes to recognizing our strengths and our weaknesses or recognizing when our strength and or weakness is coming into play to get in our way. Right, so having an accountability relationship with another person, um, someone who is objective enough, who's not attached to the outcome or emotionally or financially invested in what you're trying to do, uh, like a coach, right? That's like why hiring someone you know, like myself to be a coach is the opportunity for accountability. And I have several coaches that hold me accountable in my, in my life right now. Uh, because they can ask you the question, simple questions around what was the goal? How did you do? What, what could you do differently? If you're not on track, why are we not on track? How do we get back? What are the activities that we have to focus on to get back on track? Is there anything that could get in your way? You know, and setting yourself up for success. So if you have the ability to find an accountability partner, 
that can elevate your level of success. And that is really being committed to doing things in a more purposeful way, right? And so as I'm just gonna say um, uh, one more thing on accountability and accountability partners, it's important to find the right partner. Um, sometimes your partner in life or your spouse is not the right partner for accountability in your career or other things uh, for different reasons, right? Because they might even be too soft on you. Um, and some other partners um, that or, or friends or people that you see in your life are not going to be good accountability partners because they might be too hard on you. And you don't want to feel broken down and defeated. You want someone who can ask you questions so that you can really self-discover why you're off track and acknowledge what needs to be done differently, but it doesn't need to be, um, the accountability process shouldn't be punitive and it shouldn't make you feel less than or smaller, right? So that's important. And I think it's also, it's, it's important to have someone to, who's your accountability partner who can just understand the importance of what you're doing and respect that. So they're willing to help you get back on track quickly. They don't have to be in the same profession, Right. I mean, as a as a coach, I, I provide business and life support for I don't mean to sound less life support, but it is in, in, our, in a sense. Right. But I provide support for people in their personal and professional goals. I don't have to be in your industry. I don't have to be an attorney to coach an attorney because it's really about the behavior. Right. So um, having an accountability partner can really help you accelerate that process. Uh, towards accomplishing your goals. And at the end of the day, my friends, really acknowledging that this is happening in your life, this E to P process is liberating, okay? It is really about finding freedom and independence so that you can pursue your goals. And it's about breaking from the habits that have kept us back, right? The patterns that don't serve us and acknowledging that the only way to break through to higher levels of, of success is to, is to get more purposeful. So it's action focus. It is uh, part of being more purposeful, could be attending more training, reading more books, right? It's about implementation of tools. That's what, so if you're taking notes, being more purposeful is about implementing tools, models, systems, right? Um, and so you might have to read a different book, read more books. You might be, uh, dialed into additional podcasts um, because you want to become very learning based in your pursuit here, right? So that you can develop mastery around those subjects that are going to help you to be more successful. Um, and so this is really what is going to help you get to that higher level and, and help you take control in that pursuit of whatever the goals are. Now, here's the thing. As you get through this, right, and you break through this ceiling of achievement and you start to become more purposeful, perhaps you hire a coach, you attend different training classes, you're reading amazing books, you're implementing the things that you're learning, uh, you're implementing systems and models, you're being much more focused and strategic, and your business is exploding, your goals are getting you know, closer to you, and you're hitting those goals and you're seeing the success in all these areas. What do you think happens after a little while? All these new things that you're learning to do that were so uncomfortable and unnatural at first, as you continue to do them and see the, the effects of the implementation, well, it's gonna become second nature. So all of that over time becomes very natural to you, right? Because you've learned to work at a higher level. And so eventually this is going to repeat. You're going to be at a higher level of thinking and doing and succeeding, but the things that you learn to get to that level of success at some point won't be enough to get you to the next level, right? So it's about understanding that this is going to repeat in your life. And when it does, right, it's about knowing that you're aware of hitting your head on the ceiling of achievement and knowing that it'll become time again to either maybe level up with coaching, hire a different coach, read different books, attend different classes, talk to different people, get into some type of um, you know, ma mastermind group, right? It's about continuing to find the tools and the resources that will help you to level up, right? So in other words, if I'm gonna go out into my yard, 
Now I'm gonna plant some new flowers. That hand shovel or trowel that I use is great for that job. It, it was enough to get me to complete that task. But then if I need to go out in, in another area of my yard and plant a tree, I might need a bigger tool, right? And then if I'm going to lay some stone for a patio, I need additional tools. So it's about understanding that there's always this need to level up, right? And find additional tools. And so I think that, you know, for a lot of us, those of you who are in this Monday Morning Mojo group, what, regardless of what you might do as a job or career, you have an entrepreneurial spirit because you, if you didn't have an entrepreneurial spirit, you wouldn't probably be plugged into something like this, right? And so those of us with that entrepreneurial spirit know that it's about becoming more purposeful. You know, it's about knowing that that purposeful approach and that purposeful mindset will keep us focused, not only on the goals that we want to accomplish now, but really help us create vision for our future and where we want to go. And, you know, I know we've talked here on, on yeah, sorry guys, I know we've talked here on Mojo before a lot about finding our purpose, right? And finding our passion and our purpose. And so this is it, right? This is what we're talking about. It's, it's knowing that in order to really live out our purpose, are we doing things on purpose? Are we being purposeful about how we approach our, our goals and you know how we learn to get comfortable being uncomfortable? Right. So if you're taking notes, write that, write that down. In order to achieve success at a really high level, you have to be willing to get um, uncomfortable. You have to be willing to see that growth, right? Because being on purpose, it's going to push your limits. See, in here, in this entrepreneurial style, it's cozy. <laughs> you're in your comfort zone because you're doing what comes natural to you. However, is it really, really creating the success you say you want? Is it really helping you gr grow at a rate that allows you to live a big life? I think that, you know, when we acknowledge that it's not, and when we feel like we've hit our, our capacity in some area, right? We've hit our head on that feeling of achievement. We have to be willing to say it's time to push our limits. And I think that in pushing our limits and becoming more purposeful, that's when we can really start to call in uh, success, you know, in a way that maybe we couldn't have imagined before, right? And so I think that going from E to P is also going from being complacent to adventurous. It's going from being comfortable to being progressive. And that's really, you know, when we commit to this process, that's when we can start a pathway towards mastery too. So, uh, any thoughts or questions? I know I had a lot of content to share with all of you. Um, you know, I always love to hear your feedback. If you're on Facebook, good morning. Let me know what you're thinking. And if you're here with me on Zoom, um, any thoughts, questions, or comments about this process? Can you relate to this in some way? Sarah, I know you're always good for a commentary. Do you mind if I call on you? <laughs> no, I don't mind at all. Um, yeah, I, this had lots of resonance with me. Um, I, I think that, I think the trouble with when you hit your head against that ceiling, um, it can be so disorienting and it's, and so difficult to find the kind of help that you need, um, that will actually, um, kind of get you back on track. Um, uh, and, and for me, I just like wrote down a whole, thank you so much. Namaste for the, uh, for this content this morning, because, I wrote down all kinds of things that I need to do this week to, again, to just kind of structure my week so that um, I get, uh, I get, you know, the stuff that I need to get done, done so that I don't, you know, my husband's working at home too. So, um, you know, he can say, let's go grocery shopping. And it's like, we can do that later. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, for sure. Um, so thank you for sharing that. And I, I would love to hear from you, even if it's just a private message, let me know how you're doing with that. Um, and so um, this is going to be on the Facebook group, this diagram, if you want to refer back to it. And if, as always, if I can help anyone um, with their 
you know, journey towards whatever the goals or success that you have planned, you know, and even if it's just to try to understand how to create a new habit, right? We've talked about habits here a lot. And I think that that's really what this process is about. And it's about not giving up, right? Because when we hit our head on that ceiling of achievement, as I said, if the disappointment sits in for too long, um, then it's easy to just, you know, get into that, that stage of what we call resignation and say, well, you know, this isn't for me, right? And I'm going to be, I'm just going to give up. Um, and I would question that, right? Because something brought you to it in the first place. And so when it gets challenging and it gets difficult, is it about quitting or is it about finding a better way, right? And so that may be something I can help a lot of you work through. So if I can, please do reach out. Um, all right, well, uh, yes, hey, Barry, nice to see you on Facebook. He said perseverance, yeah. And you know, it's about being a little gritty, right? We've talked about that here before too. And knowing that whatever you're committed to, um, it, is, it, is, it, is it always gonna be an easy road or a straight road? No, um, but giving up is it, not gonna get you where you wanna be. So, uh, and then honestly, when you give up, you gotta start all over again, right? And so I think that there's opportunity uh, for us, especially when you can work through the process with yeah. someone else to understand like, how do I put in those more purposeful things, those more purposeful, a more purposeful style, right? Which is gonna always be around coaching, training uh, or consulting, uh, reading different books, listening to podcasts, right? Education, right? Uh, knowing that it's about creating action focused activities um, implementing models and systems and accountability, right? Those are the things that are going to help you get to the next level. And then as you get to that next level and things start to really work well, and it, it is going to become easier and more natural over time. And eventually you're going to hit another ceiling of achievement. So it's always about, you know, what, where the breakthrough has to occur. So, all right, everyone, thank you so much. I'm glad that you were able to be with me this morning. I love you and appreciate you. Um, and do you have something else to say, Sarah? Yeah, just, just one more thing. Um, I think some of the issues that I've had is that, uh, or, and have had in the past, um, are people who do, the people who get in your way are people who don't want for the change to happen. Oh, um, yeah. And, um, and you really have to plan how you're going to deal with those people because they can be bugaboos. Yeah, so I have to talk about that for one second, and that might even be another Monday Morning Mojo conversation. As you grow and as you develop more skills and as you start to achieve success in any area of your life at a higher level, there will be some people in your life who are not comfortable with that because what you're showing them is something that they are not doing in some area of their life. Not that they can't do it, but they just choose not to. And so what people don't understand, when, when someone doesn't understand something, it makes them uncomfortable, right? So what people don't understand, they challenge. And, and it can show up in a lot of ways. It could show up as someone even being somewhat rude or hostile about it, right? Like, well, what are you doing? And it could even show up in some ways as someone who thinks they're just concerned for you. Like, oh, you know, do you, are you sure you really wanna do that? Oh, you wanna put yourself out there in that way? It's because they have fear, right? They're operating from fear themselves. And there's this great story, this analogy of crabs in a bucket. And so if you think about a bunch of live crabs in a bucket, um, and, and I believe that this is something that they actually have shown to be true, uh, there's actually, so there's a crab that's gonna start to climb up out of the bucket, right? Um, but the interesting thing about the crabs and their community uh, is that the other crabs don't follow, right? So what happens is as one of the crabs starts to climb out of the bucket, escaping for freedom, the other crabs pull him back in. And then they watch where the crab tries to do it again, they pull him back in. Well, what do you think happens over a short period of time? After a few times of pulling the crab back down, he stops, he gives up. So we can use that as an analogy in our own mindset and behavior. Don't allow the other crabs in your bucket to pull you back down when you are looking to pursue new opportunities and growth and you know maybe even um, 
step out into bigger new ways, starting a business, writing a book, creating a not-for-profit, whatever it might be, or even just deciding to, you know, start running and, and losing 20 pounds, right? Whatever it is, or leave a marriage, start a relationship, whatever it is. If you believe that this is what's right for you and you're on that, that path, then you have to stay true to that and keep climbing out of the bucket. And no matter how hard someone tries to pull you down, even though they might really mean well and they love you, it's just that they don't understand what you're doing. They're fearful of it um, or it's challenging something in them. Um, you, you have to be willing to know that what you're, you're headed towards is right for you. And, and I'm not going to say that it's easy. It can be painful too when people in your life who you really love and respect feel you feel like they don't understand. Um, it might just mean that you need to expand your circle right? I'm not saying that you have to leave a friendship or anything behind, but you might have to expand your circle and bring additional people in. I think that's another way we become more purposeful in the pursuit of our goals too, is, is recognizing that we need more people around us as mentors, as advisors, as counselors who can help us with that, you know, purposeful approach that because they, they're doing it themselves, right? So I think Sarah, that was an awesome comment. Uh, that really re relates to what we're talking about. So, all right, everyone. Well, as always, thank you so much. I um, really find this to be so gratifying. I hope that you find a lot of value in the topics that we have each week. Uh, if you have any thoughts about topics or something you want me to bring up during a Mojo session, just let me know. I'm always looking for that um, because it's about you. And uh, if you find value in this, please share this with your friends. Um, we love to see the Facebook community grow. Love to see more of you join me on Zoom and or Facebook Live. Uh, so share the group, share your thoughts, share your comments, share your growth. Use the page as a community to support you too. All right, so listen, next Monday I'm on vacation. So no live Monday mo morning mojo, but we'll be back the following week. Um, but I will be sharing content over the next two weeks regardless. So just uh, stay tuned to the Facebook group. Have a great day, everyone. And I will talk to you soon.